And welcome to another episode of the Evil Tester Show. And in this episode, we're going to look at why are some companies getting rid of their QA teams and why is that a good thing? Okay, so we'll all have heard of companies that are getting rid of their testing teams or their QA teams, right? We're getting rid of the entire QA department. We were previously told uh, that software testing is dead. Well, really, it's manual QA is dead. And even then, it's not even <laughs> properly manual QA. It's manual quality control is dead. And that's a good thing, right? I, I'm going to try and convince you that that's a good thing. In fact, maybe I won't. I'll just say that's a good thing. I believe that's a good thing. And what we have to do is figure out how to respond from a testing or an individual tester perspective. Now, testing as a process has always evolved to fit the project. So I'm not really going to be talking about covering the process. I'm not going to really be talking about how we respond in process terms to changes in the development process. That's probably a, a different podcast. What I'm really looking at is the role of the tester and how testers view their roles, right? Now, I've always made a distinction between QA and testing. So I'm not, that, I'm not concerned when people get rid of their manual QA teams. So why is that? So first of all, what is QA? QA means quality assurance which is the overall process for assuring the quality of a delivered project or a product, which if we split it into three things is quality control, which we can automate in terms of the continuous integration, the continuous delivery, the unit testing. It involves inspection for requirement checks to evaluate the quality of the implementation. Inspection means we know what we're looking for we know where to find it. We know what good is. We know what right is. So we can look in that place where that inspection needs to be and we can we can automate that, right? In theory, if you know exactly where to look and you know exactly what you're looking for and if it is possible to get the system in that state and it is possible to check that in an automated way, we can automate it. Now, inspection is a quality control gatekeeping aspect because we reject things that don't conform to the defined tolerances. Now, historically, we've lumped inspection into testing. It's one of the first things that you do. Does the system do X? Now, if you didn't have any automated execution at all, it would look like a lot of your testing is actually inspection because it is. Can we log in? Can we do this? Can we still apply to join the system when we are under 18? Can we join the system when we are over 18? All these combinations that we know are supposed to work. If we don't automate in any way, we have to keep putting them in and it's covered generally by the testing process. So it looks like testing is an inspection process. Testing is way more than that. But very often, we don't get time to do proper testing because we're so busy doing inspection. And what you often find on agile projects is because they are built around small stories and the stories have predefined requirements with acceptance condition, testing on a story is actually inspecting that the acceptance criteria has been met and there's very little exploration around that. It is possible, and this is done on agile projects, to automate the inspection in advance like BDD essentially automates the inspection in advance so that when the story comes out, we run the automated inspection and it passes. Similarly with unit testing, we can do that in advance, test-driven development, write the test, it fails, write the code, it passes. We inspected it automatically. Testing is something that we've historically lumped into a QA process. But, and it kind of is, but kind of isn't. What we do for testing, which is looking for information to expand our models beyond that which is covered by the requirements. So extremes, risks, data and usage scenarios that we haven't built into checked assertions. We don't necessarily know what the output should be. We don't necessarily know how to inspect for this. We don't know what the limits of tolerance should be. We need to explore to find this out. Inspection is a quality control gatekeeping process. The Testing process 
isn't a gatekeeping process. The testing process is a way of providing information which you use to evaluate the quality of the product. It might help you control the quality by providing information which leads to the cancellation of a project or changing how you build things or deciding not to release a version. But the testing itself did not control that. Testing provided information that can help influence the control process on the quality. But it's information. It could be ignored. Testing is not a direct control mechanism. Inspection is a direct control mechanism. So what does getting rid of QA mean? It usually means no more QA team. It usually means automated quality control of the two things that we mentioned before, which were the actual quality control process, all the procedures that we put in place to make sure we don't do anything wrong, which we automate in software development with continuous integration, continuous deployment, and the automated inspection for meeting requirements within the tolerance that we can ascertain through the measurement on the checks that we're using in the automated execution. And companies are trending towards getting rid of that part of the QA process, that real quality control process. So what leads to people getting rid of teams of testers, QA teams? Now, it's primarily because they were doing inspection and not testing. Scripted inspection lends itself to being automated. Very often, people do a lot of scripted testing. Because it's scripted, it lends itself very easily to being automated. But also, it very often is only justified in terms of the requirements. So really, it's just inspecting the requirements. It's very hard to script an exploration in advance because you don't necessarily know what you're going to get. So it's not often testing, but it is very aligned to inspection. Very often, the testing that's performed lacks variety. It lacks variety in terms of data, and it lacks variety in terms of flow. Because it lacks variety, it easily lends itself to being automated. The more variety that you can incorporate, the less easy it might be to automate. Although with automating, it's very easy to add in a lot of input variety, and it is even possible to add in a lot of process flow variety. So variety itself is not a determination that it can't be automated. But anything that people look at and think, we could automate that, they will try to automate that. And very often they are right to automate that because it probably should be automated because that will save people's time. But we're not really talking about removing testing and they aren't really talking about removing QA. Companies might think they are. What they're really talking about is automating quality control. So testers are at risk when they are involved in a quality control process where they primarily do quality control. That's when they are most at risk. And that's when QA teams get removed when they're primarily been doing quality control. Development practices are making it much easier to add automated inspection and process control into the development process. So testers need to distinguish themselves from quality control. So how can testers distinguish themselves from quality control? Well, there are some specialisms that people talk about that are now in vogue. Quality assistance. I'm laughing because these are not terms that I typically use and they're not necessarily roles that I would typically want to do. So quality assistants and quality coaches, automators and software development engineers in test. These are the typical roles that are talked about. So risks with this. Assistants are never paid as much or valued as much as the people they assist. Coaches, and there's a, a trend in coaching at the moment, particularly in software, that coaches don't necessarily need to be able to do the thing that we're coaching people in because coaching is a set of skills and coaching is a set of skills. But all the coaches that I know can do. So if you can't do the thing you're coaching people in, then you might struggle to get the respect of the people that you're coaching. And if you're coaching them in quality, which is a very nebulous term, then you may well be talking in platitudes, right? Everyone knows that 
automate more, do more test driven development, add more unit testing, increase your test coverage, all of that stuff. They're platitudes. We know that that will help us. We know that will improve. What we want to know is how, how specifically, how exactly, how specifically do I automate that? How can I unit test this? How do I architect in order to do that? If you've got the skills to be able to sit down and do it, then coaching is probably a, a useful thing to do. If you only have the coaching skills, then there's risks that you are vulnerable in that position. Automator, again, automating is something that can be absorbed into the coding process. So if all you can do is automate and you can't do the rest of the coding process, then that role is vulnerable. SDET, Software Development Engineer and Test, it's kind of an odd role. It depends on the company as to what that means, but very often it means writing tools to support the testing process. But if the testing process is being automated because it's really a quality control process, then the SDET rule may not have much to offer because there's no testers anymore and we've automated away. And the risk is that we're focusing on the easy stuff again, right? We're focusing on the requirement confirmation approach again. We're focusing on the inspection again. A missing specialism is being a better tester. <laughs> there's, no, there's no reason that testers can't survive if they are better testers and their testing adds value. The easy stuff is taking a requirement and seeing if it has been met for a specific set of agreed in advance tolerances. The hard stuff is taking a requirement, identifying all the risk and ambiguities and exploring them in different ways to find issues that are actually important to people. The difficult stuff is looking in all the gaps between the requirements, between the things that people have said, finding all the conflicts between the things that people have said, finding all the sources of emergent behaviour the stuff that hasn't been thought about or handled, that only when it's combined and used in different ways over time in different combinations. I mean, etc. So all the testing stuff, the hard stuff, the stuff that we don't necessarily know in advance, that we don't know how to evaluate whether it's good or not with a, a, a yes, no answer. A lot of the stuff that people never had the time to do before because they were too busy doing all the inspection, the stuff. They were too busy doing stuff that could have been automated if only we had taken the time to automate it. Now, the risk with being a better tester occurs when companies equate testing with QA or equate testing with quality control. So better testers or good testers need to be able to demonstrate the difference between what they do and with the quality control process that people are used to and expect to automate. So better testers will also be able to describe the risks involved in removing the manual QA process. Companies don't tend to say, right, we're going to get rid of all the, the manual QA, but not tell anyone. <laughs> so at the point that they tell people, you can then describe what the gaps are. You can describe what inspection points have not been automated yet and where there are going to be risks. You can explain how testing fits into their new idealized automated QA process. Where does testing add value? How does the testing that you do add value? When has it added value in the past? When will it add value in the future? Now, when we are testing, when we work in development processes, we are always evolving our test processes. Normally, we're, we're getting better at how to test this with this technology, with this process. So what are you working on and learning that will make a difference to the process in the future that they may not have realised or thought about yet? Testers have to advocate for testing. That's important in general, but that's really important when people decide they're going to get rid of the manual QA process, because when they get rid of the manual QA process, they will be getting rid of the testing that they don't see any value in yet. So we have to convince them of what that value is and how we can add it. Now, another approach, and this is probably harder and is not something that is necessarily open to everyone, is to expand 
the role of the tester to be a software developer. And I don't just mean learn how to program, because to me, software developer does not equal programmer. Software developer is an aspirational goal because a developer can code, they can elicit and question the requirements, they can design systems, they can automate, they can test, they can do security, they can deploy environments, they can set up environments, they can manage AWS instances, they can do, they are masters of the entire software development process. That's what makes it an aspirational goal. This is something that we can continually learn. Now, most individual specialisms within software development are essentially never-ending sources of learning in the first place. So being a software developer who's going to learn all the individual specialisms is a hard approach. But you can still add more development skills into your skill portfolio and add more value on projects so that you can work alongside the programmers and other people on the project teams to add more value even beyond your testing skills. But equally, programmers can expand their role by developing knowledge of more of the software development process, and that includes testing. All right, there's not some magic reason why testers are the only people that can learn testing. Very often it's just because people don't study all the disciplines within software development. But we could. So you could, if you chose to, expand your profile. You don't have to. Um, you could, if you want to change role, you can be an agile coach, a scrum master, but they're different skill sets. They focus on different parts of the process. And there's often a lot of competition in there because, frankly, they're hard to measure. Again, coach is harder to assess. Depends how well the coach gels with the team. Scrum master is something that you can get trained in very quickly. It's possible to be a scrum master, but still be very bad at scrum mastery. Good scrum masters are worth the weight in gold, but it takes a lot of time and experience to become one. You don't just necessarily adopt. So the reality check is that there's nothing wrong with being a tester. The hard part is having organizations understand that. So manual QA is dead is a clickbait type title. It's really manual quality control and inspection is dying. And that is a good thing. No one is ever going to get rid of testing. People are automating the inspection process. They are automating as much of the quality control process as they can. Manual forms of inspection are being removed. And this is a good thing. It should actually help testing. It should actually help testers by freeing up more of our time to do good testing. The hard part is remaining just a tester on Agile projects because people very often don't see the value in there. And if they haven't seen the value in there before, coming on as a good tester can be hard, which is why expanding the range of your skill sets might be necessary in order to get another job somewhere else if you are pushed out of your role because someone is trying to get rid of the manual quality control processes. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to. We have the risk that the testing industry in general is often not advocating for testing. The testing industry in general seems to be advocating for quality assistance and quality coaches, which may or may not be important. People might think they're getting rid of testing. People might be trying to get rid of testing. Automating inspection has the built-in risk that all the stuff that good testers find when they are not busy ticking off requirements and compliance will not get done. But good testing skills are required. Companies might not see that yet. When they get rid of their manual quality control, they might start to see that over time because they have not got enough people trained in testing and they may not have enough coverage from the automated inspection processes and there may be all the gaps that they haven't evaluated. There's a general industry risk that the testing industry is advocating more for quality assistance 
and quality coaches than it is for testing. So keep demonstrating good testing. Keep putting out information about testing or expand your role so that you're covering the software development process because software development is becoming more of a testing process. The more that we want everything to be done by programmers, the more those programmers are going to have to become software developers, the more they're going to have to learn how to inspect effectively, which is something that testers know how to do. And they're going to have to learn how to test effectively, which is something that testers know how to do. So testers only have to learn how to program. Programmers have to learn how to inspect and automate and test. So testers may find that they have an edge in the upcoming world of agile software development or places where they're trying to get rid of the manual quality control processes. But you don't have to do any of that if you can demonstrate that good testing has a place. If you can demonstrate by being a better tester than the organization has ever experienced, then there's no reason why they should get rid of you. Even when they automate as much as humanly possible, there will still be a need for testing. Companies may not see that, so you may need to expand your skill set to become a better developer than other people, but you're only having to learn programming if you do that. To me, the concept that we're getting rid of manual QA or manual quality control is ultimately a good thing, but we have to figure out how to make the best of it for ourselves, either by changing our skill sets or changing our roles, advocating in general for all the things that make testing special and important, or trying to figure out how to incorporate this better into the software development process. Change isn't necessarily bad, it's how we adapt to it. And there we go. If you find that useful, remember to visit eviltester.com slash show where we have other podcasts and all the information about this one and sign up for Patreon where we release exclusive content. And remember, visit eviltester.com just to browse the site and view the blog. Thanks very much and I'll see you the next time.